Are you aware that BRICS has undergone an expansion to become BRICS Plus? Yes, six additional nations have become part of this alliance. However, this isn't your typical scenario of newcomers joining a gathering. This development has the potential to reshape the global order and impact how international relations and foreign policy are conducted. Why? Because among these six new members, two are Gulf countries with a secret weapon that could be concerning for the Western world and the G7. In today's video, we will uncover this secret weapon, introduce the new participants, and discuss five key takeaways from the recent BRICS Heads of State Summit held last month. But before moving forward, we would like you to subscribe to the channel for more updates. So let's begin. On 22nd August 2023, the BRICS Heads of State Summit took place in Johannesburg. The event's highlights were summarized in the 26-page Johannesburg communique. The first significant point was the inclusion of new full members – Argentina, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia and the UAE. The noteworthy aspect here is that China emerges as the primary beneficiary. This is because the addition of major oil-producing nations like Saudi Arabia, the UAE and Iran implies that more oil transactions could shift from the US dollar to the Chinese Yuan. This aligns with China's ambition to establish the Yuan as a major global currency. Interestingly, both the UAE and Saudi Arabia, despite their strong ties with the United States, have begun to express interest in strengthening their relations with China. Saudi Arabia being China's top crude oil supplier and China being the primary destination for Saudi oil exports have further deepened their ties. Additionally, Beijing played a mediating role in facilitating an agreement between Iran and Saudi Arabia, contributing to reducing tensions in the Middle East. Saudi Arabia has also made a significant move by announcing a $3.6 billion deal to acquire a 10% stake in China's Rongsheng Petrochemical. This agreement will result in Saudi Arabia supplying 480,000 barrels per day of crude oil to the company. While this may raise concerns in Western and US circles, the following key point may provide some reassurance. During the BRICS summit, Russian President Vladimir Putin utilized the platform to attribute the conflict in Ukraine to Western involvement. Participating in the summit virtually, Putin pointed out that some countries, clearly alluding to the US and other Western nations, were pursuing their own hegemonic agendas in a continued pursuit of colonialism and neo-colonialism. However, the other four BRICS leaders physically present at the summit, namely President Cyril Ramaphosa, President Xi Jinping, President Luis Inácio Lula da Silva and Prime Minister Narendra Modi did not publicly endorse Putin's justifications in their responses. In response to Putin, Ramaphosa simply stated, We agree that the conflict can only be resolved through negotiations, a stance you have consistently supported. Modi did not touch upon the Ukraine conflict in his address at all. She too avoided direct reference to it, though he emphasized BRICS cooperation in sustaining progress towards achieving the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals in a time of global instability. The third, and arguably the most significant key takeaway, pertained to de-dollarization. The new development bank, also known as the BRICS Bank and headquartered in Shanghai, has thrown its support behind the initiative led by its founding member countries to promote the use of domestic currencies for facilitating trade and financial transactions. The aim is to reduce dependence on the US dollar. Notably, this focus on employing local currencies for trade and finance, thereby decreasing reliance on the US dollar, has long been on the BRICS bloc's agenda. South African President Ramaphosa disclosed that the finance ministers and central bank governors from BRICS nations have been entrusted with the responsibility of examining the methods for conducting trade using local currencies. He stated, 
the summit reached a consensus to assign the task of exploring local currencies, payment mechanisms and platforms to the BRICS finance ministers and central bank governors as appropriate, with a directive to present their findings to the BRICS leaders at the next summit. The BRICS declaration expressed support for increased involvement of emerging and developing nations within the United Nations, including its Security Council. It is noteworthy, though, that Russia and China did not explicitly endorse the idea of granting permanent Security Council seats to South Africa, Brazil and India. This indicates that BRICS serves as a platform for advocating and pressuring the permanent members of the UNSC to consider expanding the composition of the Security Council. The last key point of interest revolves around concerns regarding some of the new BRICS member states. The inclusion of the UAE, Saudi Arabia and Iran as new members has sparked unease regarding the BRICS alliance's stance on human rights matters. All three of these countries are governed by authoritarian regimes that have not prioritized women's rights and equality. It's worth noting that the joint declaration signed by the existing five BRICS nations emphasizes the promotion and protection of human rights and fundamental freedoms. Among the current five members, only South Africa, Brazil and India can be characterized as democratic states. Extending invitations to Iran and Saudi Arabia could potentially shift the balance toward an approach that lacks democratic values, repressive and autocratic in foreign relations and trade. Furthermore, Saudi Arabia's record of restricting media freedom and political tolerance came to light with the tragic murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi at their consulate in Istanbul in October 2018. Additionally, Iran's ongoing provision of military support to Russia raises significant questions about the motivations behind its admission to BRICS, hinting at a strong influence of Russian interests. These key takeaways have the potential to reshape our approach to international relations and foreign policy. BRICS could serve as an alternative avenue for circumventing US sanctions and reducing dependence on the US dollar. However, the inclusion of Saudi Arabia and Iran in this context may alter the dynamics of global oil politics significantly. For example, if at the behest of Putin, Saudi Arabia and Iran decide to curtail global oil production as they did last year, it could create considerable concern in the Western world. BRICS also represents a new voice for the Global South, positioning itself as a direct competitor to the G7. This development appears to be a signal of a potential new Cold War emerging. In response to these changes, the Western world may find itself compelled to take proactive measures, as the evolving situation could have lasting implications for their interests and stability. In conclusion, the recent BRICS developments encompass five key takeaways. BRICS Plus expansion, de-dollarization efforts, calls for UN Security Council reform, human rights concerns with new member states, and the potential emergence of a new Cold War. These developments collectively signal a significant shift in the global geopolitical landscape, necessitating careful consideration and adaptation of Western foreign policy strategies. If you like the video, do subscribe to the channel for more updates. We will catch you in the next one. Bye.